Monkey Music Show with Sarah and Joey Allen. Joey, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm good. Fantastic. I'm glad I could finally finally speak with you. You know, right? It took a little bit, but um, you know, by the grace of of the internet, here we are. Right. Well, yeah, you know, it's funny, and I was thinking, I'm like, when was the first time I, besides hearing the album, the first album, I think I saw you guys play. When I saw you got play was uh, I think it was Atlanta. You guys were opening for Motley Crue, maybe 1990. They're doing feel good. You guys yep. are like off the first album, maybe going yep. into the new album, the second album at that time, kind of yep. window. Yep, yep. It was right at the tail end of the first uh, cycle. So usually, you guys back are tight though. Day. Pardon me. You guys were tight. You guys sounded good. Oh. You could tell but you were on the road. You know, I think we did like two hundred and ninety shows on that whole yeah. cycle. So usually, do a record from the start of writing to the end of a tour is like about eighteen months. Yep. So you probably caught us on month eighteen, and um. By that time, you're pretty good at what you're doing. It was good. I mean, you guys were good, and you guys held your own. Like, Motley Crue was sober, and they were probably at their best. That was probably their best at forever. So, like, I, they were at their best, and you guys were tight. So, it was, like, a good, solid, yeah. you know. I got to agree with you. Motley, when we toured with them, they were amazing. And and um, to see to see all the chatter on the internet today is kind of a bummer. None of my yes. business. I, no. I, I've got an opinion, but it's, you know, who cares? Um Right, I mean, and, as we uh, all yeah, do. but they were fantastic back then, and it was a it was a fun time for us to tour with them. So it yeah, great. it was not the same show. I saw them when I went to see the stadium. Um, it's not the same show. So, but I enjoyed seeing Def Leppard play live. Though I had never seen that one, so I really enjoyed that part. Yeah, the stadium tour Def that was a Leopard good forever. So I'm good friends with Phil Collin, and in fact, I saw him a few weeks back, and um, because he they lives sounded so good. So, they sound yeah, he's so fantastic. He's and let me tell you, and I, and I tell you one thing I'll say as far as it goes: the fact that they opened a show in a stadium with a brand new song off a new mm -hmm. album. How awesome is that? Like, how brave is that? How that's how rock and roll because no one knows it. It's, it's everyone's there for the greatest hits. You got a stadium full of people, and you're like, "We're gonna do a new song." <laughs> that's awesome. Good I knew, for them. I knew it, I'm a big fan, so I'm like, I knew the song. Yeah, I good. That was great. Well, there that's you go. The way it should be. That, no, that's, that's the way it should be. That's who they play it for. I don't disagree. I think new music's great. I think it's it's fresh for the artists and too much in this in this uh, in the USA. Everybody wants the back catalog and everything, and it is what it is. I think over in Europe for our genre, it's they they accept the newer stuff a lot better. You know, so as, as well they should. I, I think it's, it's a mixture for artists too. I mean, I think you guys you were in a hard spot. And I think what's really nice is I think that Warren is really. God, it's like full second win. Like the lineup is fantastic with you know, Robert. I mean, you guys were always good with different members, but it's you guys are finally this warrant with Robert. I think you, you pass all the everything else. There was the first warrant, kind of like Deep Purple, Mach One, Mach Two. They're just different, not better, or worse, just different. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been <laughs> there's a lot of ex members of Warrant. There is not as but, many as um, Ellie Gunzo. Yeah, I right. Like maybe that. not. I don't know. We maybe we'll give them a run for their money, but um, no, I don't think so. I, I, I know was, we've I got know. less singers in Skid Row, so we've got that going for All us. All right, you got that going, but our, our uh, good but he, our good friends in Skid Row, right? They're um, awesome. I think I think the drummers though, maybe Spinal Tap, you're ti you're tying with though. I think yeah, and, and, and there's really things. there's really only one guy that should be behind the throne, and that's Steven Sweet. He, he's he yeah. plays very unique. He's got what we call grease. And um and he sings like a bird, so there's really only one guy that should be back there, in my opinion. No, as I agree, and that was interesting because he left after you left around the same time, Dog Eat Dog, and you guys both came back around the same time, like it was a package deal. But I don't think I you guys were clearing it out. And I came back first. Trendsetter. So, so and then he, you know, it it um, we've always even when we left the band, we always stayed in touch. Not as much, but every six months or something, we'd get together and. and have some dinner or something to have a good time. So when I came back, I, I went right to him because I knew that with him, at least the core of the band would sound right, you know? Yep. So um, once he came back in that, that started to gel and now it's, it's, it's silly how good it sounds. So. Oh, you guys are awesomely great. You know, um, unfortunately I talked to Mason uh, a while back, but the interview never aired because there's sound audio problems. I think his watch was doing something and I had a mic problem. So it never aired. It was so good. Yeah, he had some great stories. He's such a great guy. And I was like, oh. But um Yeah, you get him back on. I, I don't have to I think one of the best things he told me was he goes, he goes, one of the best pieces of advice I have, because he's talking about his watches. I know he's a watch collector. He says, I think like a manager or someone told me, he says, you know, always have like a Rolex or something on you. Because no matter where you go, if you broke, you have no money, 
It always retains value. Give <laughs> you a ride somewhere. I don't know if it was a song and dance, but it was a good story. I and mean, I'm, I'm well, always a for good story. He's a true you know? Washington Sonata. There's, there's a little group of guys out there in rock bands yes. that are they're a singer from Kisses that way. They get into their watches. I know Paul Stanley likes watches, but I think Eric and Eric and Robert geek out on the movements. And you know, I, I'm just not that guy. I'm not in. We call it watch porn, okay? And I'm not into the watch porn. But you are. You do have a you have a technical background though. A with like okay. radio type wiring and and with I we talked before IT. And you're yes. a, you know a, a yeah. data computer guy, so. You have your own dorkiness, as as do I. I mean, I am geek, uh, ge- an official geek for sure. You know how many people are actually do IT from from music and bands? Like I never realized how many I talked to that actually converted over the time from that rock time and just yeah, very it's easily that rock and music, math, math, music vibe. You know what I mean? The, the thought well, process, same the, yeah, same part of the brain, maybe. Who knows? When when you guys were writing songs. And I always said it was like Janie before, and I was like, you know, and, and then Jerry and stuff. What is the contribution that, say, as you came back into the band? Mm-hmm. Is it more of a group thing? Because it's always hard to tell, like, who did what. Because, like, to me, Dog Eat Dog was a great album and, like, the best album. I thought Rockaholic was good, but to me, Louder Faster is probably my, is like the next great album after Dog Eat Dog for me. Because okay. over, overall, Rockaholic's good. It's just for like a solid album, like you play all the way through. Mm-hmm. To me, it just, Pounds it out just like that, like it's all cylinders, right? So I'm excited about a new album. Yeah, I mean, Rockaholic has a lot of really good songs on it too. Maybe because Louder seems fast. I don't know what it is about that album. It just hits me differently. It's a it better think. rock record, I think overall. I mean, with the with with the Rockaholic, we were just kind of getting together with Mason and getting going on that, you know. And then we've had time yeah. to yeah. Also, I mean, the process. <clears throat> the process when Janie was in the band is completely different than it is now. And then, you know, it, it's, it's all who puts the work in, you know, and, and I'm just so busy with, you know, being a, being a family guy. I, you know, I do warrant. Then I've also, for the last 18 years, I've, I've got a day gig, you know? And so it's hard for me to step away and spend a lot of time writing. And I've never really been that guy anyways, to be honest with you. I'm the guy that, you know, that Janie would come to and show me his riff of Uncle Tom's Cabin on a yeah. coo- and then I would take it and and do my thing and he would go, Yeah, that's it, you know, or or Cherry Pie, the the opening riff to, you know, to that that's very unique. And if you play it right, you got it, but not very many people do. And um even inside our own band, Eric plays it different than I do, you know. <laughs> and what you hear is me and palm muting and the way it chunks and everything. But yeah, regardless, that's that's my role, you know, is 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 more interpretation. And I come up with my riffs and um I just don't write whole songs. I'm not I'm not that guy. I've never been that guy. I'm I'm jealous that I'm not that guy. I wish I could write just hit songs, you know. Well, like uh, it, hit, yeah. I mean well, I mean Jenny was an anomaly but I'm saying I, I would always thought is like you guys were a good band, and and I'm, and I'm glad you guys. I think everyone finally knows how good a guitarist you are. I think that's finally out there. That was just insane. So I think that's set. I just think that with him being a songwriter and stuff, the fact you guys are all together still and playing, that you guys can finally shine. Like to me, it's awesome. And so yeah. I'm curious, like how much you guys are finally getting new. Throw your your stuff in together because you guys sound great, and it doesn't always mean. Sometimes when the the main songwriter says, "All right, everybody else play." Yeah, right. They, they all want to write. You're like those albums don't always go that well. So the fact that you guys are fantastic now. Yeah, I think it, back in the day when Janie wrote, he was so strong, such a strong writer that it was kind of undeniable. Yeah, and then he was a little bit of a he was a little tight around the around the waist as as far as is letting anybody come in. Like it, the the riff t- sure feels good off of Cherry Pie. Yeah, I, I wrote that intro riff. I didn't get any writing credit, and it doesn't matter. But I mean, no. that's one song on those first two records where there's, you know, it's the old Boogie Van Halen riff type of thing. And um, but he was so good, you it's hard to deny it. And then you just go into a support role, you know. Now, um, everybody's got their, you know, their their ideas. Some guys write full songs, um. And then it gets, you know, and some guys just throw riffs out there and then it gets a little political. Like every band's got their political shit. It happens. But it's still more of a band and more cohesive now than it's ever been. 
You know what I mean? It's nice that we're all we all get along and there's not one person running that way when five guys or four guys are running that way. We're all we're all in the same pack now, so to speak. So it's in everything that we do, business, live shows, recording a record, writing for a record, we're all pretty much in agreement with things. I mean, there's there's equal voices. Well, you guys all seem happy when you play. Um we are. interesting. Well, I mean, it really shows. It doesn't show. Like, if you can go back and look at certain videos, you can tell that there's always a lot going on in the past. So it's so nice to see bands. And that's just, actually not just your band. A lot of bands of, of, of that time period, which I love, are really, it's like a second wind. Like, everyone's like a, like a victory lap. Like, everyone's going to enjoy, enjoy it. Like, because, you know, you do these weekend gigs. It's, it's a good thing. You fly out. You're not stuck on a bus. You can still have a family. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, everyone, yeah. Everyone, got, everyone got screwed like in the 2000s, 90s, like with grunge. So, like, everyone's kind of like, it's back because everybody, like me and our age group, is like, okay, our kids are kind of here. Everyone's got the expendable money again and want to go out and celebrate music again. I think there's a time period where everybody had like a grown up with their kids and stuff, and the music went out the window for that time period and it changed. Sure. sure. But now everyone's back again, you know, and, yeah. and you guys get to celebrate it. Well, we still wake up every day, you know, and it's a That's a celebration. That's a celebration right there. It's a gift, man. You got to keep it positive. So the fact that four of us, you know, have been playing for, I mean, 87. So what's that? 36 years together. You know, I took a little time away, but it, it doesn't change anything. Um, is amazing if you think about it. And and yeah. here's the thing I love to say in every interview is that when you play the same songs for that long, sooner or later, you get really good at it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> or really, like, yeah, we're really sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> right or sick of it or the or both but the back catalog sounds amazing and the and the cool thing is that you know we um you don't get bored you get like let's let's see how we can do more vocal live you know because four and five part harmonies or there's 30 voices behind a song and how do we make it sound big live because we're completely live right and so we we start to dig into you know four and five part harmony which is which is hard because when you've played a song for so long and you've sang it the same way for so long, muscle memory, it's totally that way. So when Mason comes in and he's like, hit these notes. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to hit those. I've been singing <laughs> these notes forever. And he goes, well, those are my notes. And I go, well, you're the singer. You sing those notes. You're telling me to sing. <laughs> then he goes, well, that's the main, and he explains it. And then we, and then we let egos fall aside and we work on it. So, you know, we are getting more refined and, and it's more important that that we continue to have fun what we're doing, but with what we're doing, but we want to sound better live. So we really still dig in. I mean, we still do vocal acapella warm ups in the dressing room, two or three songs before we go on, you know. Which so is great. Go. Yeah. How are you, how is the album? I heard there's a rumor that you talked about one time there's potentially you're working on an album. And now with <laughs> But your work, you work though. You have a day gig, your your Superman job, your Clark Kent gig. But right. then you also play every almost every weekend. Like you have Texas coming up, right. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All right. So then, and then you go back to you know work if you're doing a work that week. So I mean, you really have time to do anything. You know what I mean? I I sometimes don't have a day off for a month, and I think the longest run I did was like 52 days. Wow. You know, where I just work their 80 hour a week. So it doesn't, that's what I do. You know, it's people are like, how can you do that? And it's just what I do. And um, I enjoy well, you it. you had the other, right? COVID. So like you, you're like, I know what the other way goes. So I know what I like. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you definitely um, learn to appreciate the opportunity, but I think I always have, you know, because um, I've not had it before. So when you don't have it and then you have it again, it's a different appreciation. You know what I mean? So thus, that's why we're digging in deeper to the band and how we sound live. I mean, really, that's COVID kind of sparked that that whole growth, you know. So, but it's what you do, man. You just work and you keep on going. So, how are we doing with the album? Are, are, are there a slow work on it? Um, it's it's one of those things where you you want to be creative and you want to have the core band be creative and. Everybody, like when we don't play, everybody goes, you know, it's like, we don't, you don't, you don't, Sean, you're not calling, I'm not calling up Eric every day. What's up, dude? You know what I mean? Yeah. We just, everybody goes their own way. And then when it starts to flow, it'll start to flow. So we'll see. 
Um, right now, you know, I, I can't give you anything definite. I, I haven't heard anything recently. We got we started to think about it, and then it's kind of gone cold again. So we'll see. As a fan, but I mean, I know the economics, like I know the reality of it, the touring or economics, whatever. I'm just happy whatever a band can give. But also as a fan, I'm like, if if if, it, if, if they are writing, it's very exciting. Because I'm like, Louder was great. So I'm like, I'm ready for more. Like that was, it wasn't people like you guys are, dialed in. So that's yeah, exciting. People are, always, people are always writing in this band. So, you know, I just, I can't give you a definite. It would be great for me to say, yeah, we're at the demo stage and we'll see it, you know, something by the end of the year, early next year. But I don't know. You know, well, with your schedule, I wouldn't know how you'd even find time to record. But yeah, you maybe demo on the road and play. You could jam on the road a little bit, some you know songs between gigs. But to sit down and record, God, technology is a beautiful thing, as you know. So, yes, 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 that's very true. We wouldn't we wouldn't record a record outside of being in the same room together anymore. That that would have to happen. But by the time it gets to the recording stage you pretty much know what you got to do so it's not a it's not a long process you know drums are done in a day day and a half bass is done in a day and a half you know so for in 3 days you've got the foundation you got the rhythm foundation and then you rhythm guitars you can go through i don't know i could probably do rhythms in a two or 3 days you know because you can't do it direct cuz you have to go in and it's not going to be like me 8 hours a day it's going to be me right. four and then do some vocals you know that's usually how we do it so yeah that's pretty efficient though you guys are really efficient so with old songs and new songs is it a struggle is it like you know you have one gig you have to do certain hits at a certain gig but then you have a longer show then you can do more of you know throwing more songs is it kind of like that for you guys right now or is like a struggle each show to be like it's exciting to do new songs (laughs) i mean the hits are great because it gets people excited but as a band I would love to do more new songs. Um, I think that's kind of, um, I don't want to say what's the, I don't want to be selfish. You know, I would no, love but... to do a lot more, but, but to be honest with you for what we do, and there's one guy in warrant that he really knows, <clears throat> look, play the hits, play. There's so many top 40 hits we had. There's yeah. five or six of them. And then there's some deep album cups off the first two records that people really know. Um, going into something new, which we would enjoy more, to be honest with you, right. is the dif- difficult stretch. Sometimes we do, and you play them, and you look out, and people are just like getting to be, yeah. Well, and I get, and, and that's the hard part because it's like I get the deep cuts make sense, and I get that that perspective, and it's like, and you guys have so many hits, like it's sure. a good problem to have, but it's not like you have like two big hits and you can cycle through a couple of those songs and kind of be like, right. here's a big hits, and like you're like, no, we've got a lot of songs. So it doesn't give you a lot of wiggle room. Yeah. I mean, we played Devil Dancer off Louder, Hotter, Faster last year at a few gigs, and it was fun yeah. to play, but it just didn't go across, you know? And and um, so it's, it's. I mean, we don't even play anything off of Rockaholic Live right now, you know? Uh, do you guys, I don't think you guys ever played anything off of Born Again either. That's like your Van Halen 3 album, Gary Sharon album. Like, yeah. That... <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't every band have one? Right, it's that one album, and it's not like it was a bad album. It's just it was like the album, like it almost like it didn't exist. Like it was there, and it was it was, it was like gig, man. it's like it's like you got divorced, you're dating, but you know, while you're broke up with somebody, you dated for a little bit, and you talk about it, and you get back together again. One There's of those. fun stuff on that record, and Saint did a great job singing, and it just yeah. what it is. It, you know, it was named. It was a poorly. It was it was packaged great, poor name. Um, There's some great you know product on there, but everybody probably expected you know cherry pie or. I don't know what people think, you know. Um, I think the timing of it too. I think his voice was very similar, though. It was poppy. had some has some great riffs on it. You know, I think it's hard with lyrics are hard to be to do lyrics that are tongue in cheek. You gotta do them right, otherwise yeah. it comes off really weird. I think that might have been part of the struggle. I mean, Genie got away with it because he he it is it worked. You know yeah. what I mean? It's it's hard. It's yeah. like writing a good pop song. It's really hard. Disagree. He was very clever with lyrics. I don't disagree right. with. Him. With that, so I uh, think that that was a struggle. I think I don't think Jamie had a fair shot coming in doing an album like that. Whereas Robert's got a different voice, right? The lyrics are different, so it's like a fresh start. Yep. You know, yep. that's yeah, it's more born again than that album because that was kind of like trying to just bridge the gap um, at the time. But yeah, that album kind of just came and went. <laughs> it did for you guys. You know, it was, it was a rebuilding period. Everything I've had all kinds. Of, well, you guys are in and out though. You guys had him and the singer, and then you're like drummers back and forth. And then like once you guys got in, 
on guitar and then and Steven and then everything kind of settled in. Robert finally came in at the end and that was it. You know, I think that's when you guys locked in. I've been in this band with Robert longer than I was in the band with Janie. I mean, I left in 94, I think. So I was seven or eight years, 94, 95. And um, yeah, I mean, it's a good time. And Robert's fantastic. Um, you know, we've been, Jerry's been taking a break a lot lately just because he, he's burnt out on the travel. He did it for 35 years. So who's that bass guy? Is it the guy from lit? I can't think of his name. It looks like him. No, I didn't... Rob, Robbie Crane. He's, he's oh, no. Okay. Robbie Crane. We've been with Robbie for Robbie's been here three years. So he's uh, played the bulk of everything. He played in thin Lizzie played in rat. The... Right. I know Robbie. I, I'm sorry. I thought I saw pictures of, I thought it was a dude from, from, I saw some pictures recently. Back in like 2019, I thought that was Kevin played uh, three or four gigs with us. Okay, and, so I'm not crazy. I'm just yeah, Robin, crazy. Rob, uh, Robbie, Robin, thinking about Robin Crosby. Robbie is just Robbie's known everybody in this band since the inception of the band. He's he's like a surrogate member, you know, and he's just, I mean, he's there's only a few of us in Southern California, and it's myself and Robert or Robbie. Yeah, there's too many Roberts in this band. <laughs> But um, so we travel together, and I've gotten to know him really well. I mean, really well, like a brother, and uh, yeah. he's a fantastic guy, fantastic family guy, and an amazing bassist musician. So, you know, Jerry comes out, and plays gigs at the around the end of the month here and there, and he's writing, you know, always for everything. Um, I don't know if he wants to do a record. I don't know where his head is. We haven't really talked about it, you know. Um, so we'll see, man. Everybody's everybody's just doing their thing. Well, I think so. So it, um, is Jerry also like obviously a guitar player too? Besides being a bass player, plays a lot of guitar for a song, being a songwriter. Yeah, enough to enough to write. Yeah, yeah. But I noticed he writes a lot, and it's also great just to have the credits where have you have you can do Ma it's Dixon Mason, but you could do Mason Dixon. I'm sure you're in the, the song credits kind of you know, fun to... <laughs> that would be fantastic. But I don't know if you know. That's kind of funny, but I'm sure they, that's a whole other issue of politics and. <laughs> Lennon and McCartney. I'm not going to go there. I'm just saying. I just like <laughs> having Mason Dixon in the whole history. Uh, the if it goes uh, that, guys, can, you know, whoever writes the bulk of the song <laughs> probably puts their name on it first. That's pretty funny. Um, and but Robbie is like the Swiss Army knife of like rock bands because he's solid. He comes in. Everybody likes him. I've never heard anything bad about him. He's the most, most chill guy, fill in, pension yeah, guy in a minute. The Eddie Trunk 40th anniversary tonight with everybody, you know, yeah. and then he's going back and playing. Uh, back in Vegas again with the Chris Angel does a thing um, where he's going to go and play that gig. He's playing with the Robin Zander. And these guys, you know, want to play with him because he's amazing, you know? So, uh, I mean, it's it's nice to be him, right? Well, it's, good, it's good to be busy, too. After I'm sure after after COVID, everyone's taking as many gigs as they can, too. You don't take it for granted anymore, you know? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, we got to put that in the bank, man. You got to bank it. Yeah. So you also, though, are, we were talking earlier, you're a loyal uh to, uh, it's a GMP guitar. It's like forever, yes. right? I think from the very beginning. Let's, Out of let's... Jesus, GMP guitars .com. We've, I've been, I, Dan Lawrence, who owns GMP, and I worked at Jackson Charvel from 85. I worked from 85 to 87 at Jackson Charvel when Grover owned it. Um, oh, wow. After, after I got my um, engineering degree, I went over there and did, I worked under a, an engineer named Paul Gagan, and I did all of the active guitar electronics for all the rock you know, guys over there. And then I built some prototype amplifiers um, under Paul Gagan there. And then I left and warrant happened for me, but Dan kept on going. And then Dan bought the GMP brand from the original owner and he's had it for a long time. And CC DeVille, who's a good friend of mine from poison <clears throat> um, talked to me about going over there. And I, and I just called Dan up and Dan and I are like, we've known each other again since 85. So right. 40 years and um our birthdays are a week apart oh, wow. and it builds a solid guitar i mean this guitar is like a tank it, it it mine goes i take one out on the weekend runs there's always a backup that comes out with backline yeah um, but my guitars i get them i get them looked at maybe once a year you know i might need a fret dress or if it's really extreme get fret you know new fret job totally um you know, or put in a volume knob like we were talking before. We a went pot, yeah, a pot, yeah, a volume pot, a potentiometer. Excuse me. 
Um, before we before we went on, I'm doing that. After I get off here, I've got to go get the old soldering iron out and and do that. But um, they're just solid guitars, and they last, and they you know they take a beating going on these planes and all these different places they go, and it's just the best one of the best guitars I've ever had. You know, definitely. I definitely think you have a sound too. I mean, I think that's part of your sound is that guitar. Have you ever tried other guitars just to kind of mess around? I mean, clearly your loyalty is there, but it's fun to play, you know. I, you know what? I mean, I've had so many guitars in my life, and I still have a bunch. And I'm starting to thin the herd because I just, you know, once you get used to a guitar and the way it's built, going back or going forward to any other guitar, it's just too foreign. It takes it takes while to get that marriage for me mm-hmm. with a guitar. Um, and I think most of the tone... Probably about 70% comes from your hands, you know, and the way you pick and the way you mute and yeah. all that fun stuff. Um, and then the rest of it, you know, the guitar and the amplifier, of course, you know. But GMP's great guitars. It's got a CNC machine, set necks. Um, it's fantastic. What is it? What, so now, obviously, what is your gauge for strings? Or come on, who are you going to? But what is, what is your gauge? What is it? 10 through 46. If I could do 11s or tw- I used to do 12s, but my hand, I'd split fingertips open, you know, because I'm bending hard. And, and um, I was I was talking to you, too. I was over at Phil Collins house a few weeks ago, and he's, I think, on 13s, maybe, because he's got these big bait. His necks are huge, man. They're big. Baseball bat. A baseball bat. Yeah. It's massive. And um. And then he's got these big strings on there because he can, you know, if it was on my neck, the neck would, I'd have to adjust the truss rod because it'd just tweak it. He's, he but, works uh, out though. Even his fingers are strong. He's probably lifting weights with his fingers, that guy. No, and he's got, and he, I know. He's, <laughs> he's so healthy. He's, he's so frets, healthy. His frets are like, they're like, you know, railroad ties. They're huge. Right. But it feels, <laughs> it, it doesn't feel like a heavy string. That's the weirdest thing. And he uses these metal picks or these brass picks um, that are super soft that don't eat his strings. And um, it works for him, you know, so everybody's got their thing. Definitely. I love to hear that. I mean, I'll hear like a band, you know, all all kinds of people. And you hear like some people have like heavy, heavy strings. And I I wouldn't expect that. And then someone has like really, really light, like Avery Hill has like the lightest strings or ZZ Top had like light strings. And you're like, but it sounds so huge. So just hearing that and how each, I know, but it still blows my mind every time. It just, you know what I mean? But yeah, it's I it's so hard that I need a heavier gauge just so the string doesn't go go out of tune hard. I'm just I'm I'm kind of I'm just not a finesse guy. I'm I'm a getter done and I dig <laughs> in. I like to dig in. But you've kept the same string company though, right? All your life though too. Yeah, well the same guy for we were with Dean Markley for like 30 years and then the guy that had us at Dean Markley, um Josh Vitek started a company called uh, Sheptone. Mm-hmm. And he sources his his metal here in the good old USA, and we um and we went over to him when that move happened. So same guy, different company, um, fantastic strings. Yeah, I've got you know, there's a line of endorse endorsement companies. I've worked, you know, GMP, Sheptone, Hughes and Kettner. I've been with them for a long time now. Um, amplifiers. Uh, there's Four Star Wire. Uh, we use SKB cases. There's you know. There's all kinds of crazy stuff out it's good there. Good to give Chad, Chad uh, you know, those strings. I've never actually tried that brand of strings out though. I'll have to put that uh, on my list. I've been pretty loyal to Dario, you know, lately. Are Are you a ten through forty six guy? I've tried yeah. others, and I always go back to it because I'm like, I try. I went through a phase where I was experimenting with everything, and just like with guitars, I'm usually I'm an Ibanez, and actually, not, it's not here, but I'm upstairs. I have an Aria Pro Two, like okay. a Wildcat from eighty two, kind of like a Stratty sort of, kind of a thick neck. And that seems to go well with that gauge of strings. I think is what it comes down to. That's my main guitar. Your address, and I'll send you some strings. See them, check them out. Right. You, you're the man. I appreciate that. I, uh, I would love to. I, I think it's so funny how strings can change the sound of a guitar, though. It's so, you know, it's huge. <laughs> I change my strings every show. So well, I'm just saying a brand, even a brand, though. I mean, there are different yeah. types. I mean. I'm yeah I I don't I haven't I haven't gone away from I mean the difference between Dean Markley and Shep Tone it's the same guy he's the source well, you know? yeah 
So it's, it's, I've never put it this way, 50 shows, 50 sets of strings. I might break one string. I might get one bummer that a string that's bad, but you got to remember I'm, and I change my own strings um, because I like, I know how to use my Floyd and keep my Floyd where it needs to be. Um, Which is a skill and an art into its own. That and soldering. I hate to solder. I'll, I'll give it to somebody else to do. I will not, I'll take it apart, work on it, but I'm like, I don't want to solder. I do all that <laughs> stuff. The only thing I'll do or let Dan do is like, if I need a fret dressing or if something, something gets jacked hard, you know, with the mechanics of how it works. Um, in, you know, out of out of my ballpark, or if I don't have the parts, I'll go. I'm like 20 minutes from GMP, which is great. Oh. You know, I mean, you have a sound at this point. You don't really need to reinvent the wheel. You have your sound. You know, some people don't have a sound. Some people. Yeah, it's... talking today about Brian May's sound. I mean, Brian May uh, out of the gate, he yeah. has a sound. You know, and I have a, and I love it because I actually have the I have a, I have a box AC30 um, that I got. It's yep. a good sound. Why he never needed to, like you know Eddie Van Halen be tone chasing his whole life, you know, and he had a great sound. But he was kind of you know that guitar that named Frankenstein. I think he was the Doctor Frankenstein of guitar tone. You know, I mean he oh, was yeah. all just noodling, and and that's that was part of his life. So, I mean, look, he revolutionized the way people looked at strats and super strats and all that stuff and tone and and. And, and, you know, Variax and, you know, all kinds of mods and marshals. And I, I mean, for a time out here in California, everybody was getting their marshals modded by Jose Ariando. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, everybody in it. What mod was it? Who knows? You know, if it was a cap mod or what? I I don't even remember. That's but. hard when things get so popular. It just becomes so much. Even if it's good, it just gets like to be so much. But then when it backs down again, you're like, OK, now you can look back and be like, it's not so much mania now it's really more for the people that are more hardcore more into it again without being like like top one comes out i'm gonna become an airline pilot you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like that that mm -hmm. mindset where everyone does it now yeah. you're like you can still look back and be like oh yeah this is insane what somebody did it is very inspirational to do all different kinds of things with guitar or the yeah. sounds that you played the layers the effects it affects everybody yeah absolutely it's just different you know so different strokes for different folks but there were definitely some game changers and Ed obviously was one with everything he did, you know, gear wise as well. Have you ever wanted to play on somebody else's album, like as a guest or with somebody doing their album with anybody besides them? <clears throat> I have one regret. Um, Miles Goodwin from April Wine, they're a Canadian band. He just passed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I have a shame. Um, and we did a gig, a few gigs with them over the years, and I was a huge April Wine fan. And um, he said, I do a bunch of blues records. I'd love to have you play on a tune. And I said, that'd be fantastic. And then we just didn't didn't connect, you know. And then when he passed, I kept on seeing him online and I'd say something and he'd get back to me. And then I just I we just never made it happen. So now that he's passed, I have a regret that I didn't do that. But I really, you know, I'm not that I'm not I'm kind of a just want to do the warrant thing, to be honest with you. You know, I mean it's I'm a my, great it's a great thing. I'm just saying sometimes you're like, you know what? Might be fun to go on a date with somebody else. You know, we were on a break. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, get a hall you know, pass, just, right? Yeah, get a hall pass mm. from the boys. I might in my. I mean, there's people I've written with. There's stuff out there that I might do one day, but I don't know. Probably it'd be good of me to, before I totally hang it up, to do my own thing, even if it's an EP. We'll see. I think Possibly. it'd be fun. I love the idea of musicians just kind of doing like their own thing for like a. You know what I mean? Because there's some people you don't have to ask, like like Robert and your band. He's in 18 bands. And he's probably in a new band. He probably started a new band while we were talking right now. There's probably going to be a new super group out right now from him. There's two or three new bands out there, Sean. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. great. And, and it's going to sound great. In every one of them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but, 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 but it's nice to see everybody say, you know what? Here was, here's kind of like my influence. And here's what I would do outside the band. And it's nice to hear like that part separate. Like, you know, like, you know, like an exploded version of something. You know, as a geek. You look yeah. at it back, you go, let's just phone, phone in right to this part. Let's see exactly what he's thinking. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and to me that's interesting as a as a musician. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, there's always there's one guy I work with that's fun that just totally it's left field type of stuff. Um, and then there's stuff I like that's heavy, you know, that I grew up on like Maiden and pre old old metal, you know, new wave new wave of British heavy metal that stuff. All those bands from back then. So we'll see. Yeah, it's about doing what you like. You don't have to worry about like promoting. I mean, look, if Mick Mars is doing a solo album finally. That's that is a, that is everybody can do. So all you guitar players, 
have permission now <laughs> yeah. to stop putting it off and do it. If Mick is doing it, everybody Love needs to do it. Them. I know. That's what I'm saying. If he finally got to do his album, everybody should do their album. Agreed. You know? The gates are open. That's it. I mean, just if he can still do it, you know, everything he's fighting through, and it still sounds awesome what I've heard so far, you know. Yeah, I heard the one tune. It sounded good. It was it was a uh, very nineties. It does, and and I think the singer he has, uh, Jacob, is just a fantastic singer. And he's actually a fantastic producer. So I think it's going to be a really good album. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm excited for it. But to that same point, people like you could also do some albums and have fun. It's just All right. music, right? Yeah, just I music. Get, I got the hint, Sean. I'm I got turning it on you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, you we'll see. A year later, man. I've still got some. I've still got some breath in me, so we'll see. I mean, it, it seems like you have a lot of free time, and I want you to use your free time wisely. Oh That's man, I'm I saying free time with my, with my. Uh, I thank God my daughter's 32 because if she was around my son's age, I'd be pulling my hair out. Wait a minute. Oh, uh, I don't know. how old's your son? He's 11, going on. Oh, he sings great. I can get him up on stage, and he looks the part, and he's fantastic. But um. But he doesn't want to do it for a living. He's a really good artist. Um, I don't even know if this this would come through. It might be too bright. It's probably too bright. Yeah, it's a little bit bright. Right. Hold on, let me see here. That's probably too bright too. Yeah, it's too. Oh, wow, that's like the sun now. Yeah, you send it to me. I'll post it right on. I'll post it on here. So, oh, Tim Jammin. Yeah, very cool. But he's a uh, he's, he's a great kid. Just just give me a run for my. For my fifty-nine-year-old money, and of course, like the 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 idea of you pulling your hair out. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. right here, that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's when my hair went gray when I had kids. Hey, All at least it's not a wig, man. Like some of my contemporaries, I like I like the shape and look myself. I've actually thought about doing it myself, still with hair. I I dig it. So I'll I tell you what, I got a I I mean the guys that got hair, God bless you. I've got a few friends that that wear wigs and then they talk about other bands phoning in it. And I'm like, I'm like, how more phoning it is than wearing a wig. You know what I, I mean? Just don't think I, could, I couldn't do it. I would feel first of all, it would be hot. I think I'd have so many physical issues of the touching me. I could just yeah. weird me out. I could be like, I can't wear a baseball hat too long. Is it too itchy? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be like a dead animal in my head. And then it would just feel weird. I'm yeah. like, if I get anything, I'm ready to shave it. <laughs> when I started losing it, Jerry Dixon said, shave that off, bro. And I'm like, all right, let's go. So here you That's go. Do it. See? You know. so, so if he starts losing his hair, you're first person. You're the first one to say, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing my clippers over, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be all right. It's, been, it's really great. you know. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, Sean, and and uh, keep in touch. Let me get those strings yeah. out for you. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I will. I'll send you my address. I appreciate it. This interview, but have me fun. too. Best wishes for you and your family too, man. Thank appreciate you very much. All right. Take care, Thank buddy. You. All right, bye, -bye. Peace.